I'm going to introduce everyone to Tiffany um, after I make this land acknowledgement. The place where the clay studio stands and where I sit today is part of the traditional land of the Lenni Lenape. We acknowledge the Lenni Lenape as the original people of this land and their continuing relationship with their territory. In our acknowledgement of the continued presence of Lenape people in their homeland, we affirm the aspiration of the great Lenape chief Tamanand that there be harmony between the indigenous people of this land and the descendants of the immigrants to this land, as long as the rivers and creeks flow and the sun, moon, and stars shine. Thank you everyone for being with us. Tiffany Thomas is a native of Florence, South Carolina. Born in 1985, she was raised on a farm and experienced the ups and downs of living on a farm life. She incorporates her childhood into her paintings by using bright colors, which are associated with playfulness and collage paintings with reclaimed wood that her family discarded from old houses, buildings, and dumpsters. Her choice of clay is translucent porcelain, fired with colorful stains and glazes. Her ceramic work focuses on an array of designs from cups and mugs to light fixtures and table pieces. All of her pieces are hand carved. Um, Tiffany's goal is not only to sell art nationally online and through galleries and craft shows, but also to demonstrate how art can bridge communities and make the world a better place. I just, I bolded that. So I wanted to make sure I said that one loud. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Tiffany has exhibited at numerous shows such as South Carolina Arts Commission Gala, the North Carolina Museum of Art, Spartanburg Jury Competition, the Heritage Festival and the PD Regional Art Competition. Um, she's um, involved now at art fields. We're gonna ask her about that a little bit later. And she graduated from Francis Marion University in 2012 with a degree in visual arts with a concentration in ceramics and painting. Thank you for being with us, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So um, I thought I would start with my question that I ask many people, which is how and why did you make the brave decision to make your life in art? Um, I don't know. I think art just kind of found me, I guess. I kind of stumbled into it. Um, I, I guess I grew up on a farm. Um, I have family. They're all very artistic people. We like to tinker around with things. And so it just happened, I guess. It, um, I, was, I went to a high school that didn't have art at all. And then when I uh, went to a technical school, someone was like, oh, you look like you kind of dabble into art. You would like it. You should go to Francis Marion. And that's kind of how I ended up in Francis Marion. And I was passing by uh, um, the ceramic studio one day. I didn't know anything about clay or ceramics. And I saw people playing with mud. And I was like, just walked in. And I was like, you get to play with mud. Like, that's the course, like, seriously. And it just really... It was so exciting to just take that first class and um, touch clay. It's just such a, a tactile, like wonderful medium to work with. And, and it's, I've just been working with it since uh, maybe 2007. So it's been a long time. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> do, you do you remember what some of the, like you say, it bound you? It was just kind of part of your life as a kid growing up? Like, did you, was it that your parents were kind of handing you paper and pencils and helping you draw? Or were you just like finding things around and putting them together or a little bit of both? Like, do you remember any of those early activities that you did that made you feel like that was just part of normal life? I think, I think it was because we, we did grow up on a farm. We didn't have a lot of money, but we had this beautiful outdoor space where we could just run around and play. And I just remember making um, mud pies and getting like water from the ditch behind our house that looked like tea and pretending that was tea and, and literally drinking it. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> made you so, stronger, like, those, I'm sure. <laughs> like those experiences were really like the beginnings of something, I think. Um, and my father always, allowed for us to like, he's a contractor. So he always allowed for us to take all of his tools and kind of play with them mm -hmm. and um, make different things. He never really yelled at us or told us to leave his things alone. <laughs> um, so he probably lost a lot of things, but, but just the process of just like making and um, not really having someone say, oh, you shouldn't do that. Or like, that's not right. Um, we didn't, we just kind of, they just let us 
do whatever we wanted really with um well with a reason but with like in the backyard and and I think that was like the building blocks of of like being okay with experimenting and being okay with like creating um just hearing from our childhood not that something just because it didn't look good or just because it wasn't what they wanted us to make they didn't really like hinder us from making or creating which was very wonderful it's a wonderful thing to have especially when you're growing up yeah, yeah absolutely i mean there are there's so many borders and parameters often put on kids you know with as they're being told to be careful or I yeah. certainly think about that a lot in regard to my own child that I probably tell him to be careful too much um and there is certainly a freedom of like when we used to go in the woods and nobody the parents weren't there so we're in the backyard when you were drinking your tea water <laughs> like, you could just do it and like no one was there to stop you so yeah. you felt like you had your own um autonomy which I think is also important with regard to the fact that you grew up on a farm and you just said your dad was a contractor. So you were surrounded with people who were not just making food, but making things. And that's- Yeah, that's, that's exactly what it was. And we, um, my mother, she, every year she has a huge garden. So the food aspect was another thing. I, I think it kind of led to the two ceramics too, in a way, um, maybe that um, lured me into oh, I can make like utensils. I can make like um, plates and bowls and cups and stuff and I can put my food on it. Like, you know, <laughs> just the <laughs> utilitarian aspect of um, of that, I think kind of led, like pulled me into clay. So yeah, the special- A lot of different of, aspects. Yeah, the, the specialness of like the importance of food and good food and having grown it yourself and then kind of pairing yeah. it with something that you made yourself. That's, that's really powerful. Um, and, and yeah, being able to create those things with your own hands is yeah. um, special. And it's not not something that is ac accessible to all people. Um, and so that's kind of why I am, you know, I feel like that might have led to your the statement that I bolded in your um, bio, right? That you want to bridge communities and make the world a better place. Like there's a very powerful feeling in making things. And is that kind of where you got that idea to use this to make the world a better place? I did. I, um, it's, it's funny, when I wrote that statement uh, a couple of years ago, we had a studio downtown um, Warren, South Carolina. And for me, I really wanted that studio to bridge the gap between, um, uh, I guess, class, class level, um, race, um, different things like that. I, I had a dream of kind of um, teaching classes and, and doing things that haven't been done in our area. And when it got to the point where um, I remember just sitting there and just like uh, being like, oh my gosh, why? I want people to come in. I want people to take classes. I want people to take classes. Like that's kind of what I really wanted people to do. And most of the people really were, were buying my work and they were buying my work online. And um, I was kind of sad because I wanted, I wanted it to be a local thing, uh, something that was um, within a community. And it turned out that um, I was growing more and more online. And because I was growing more and more online, it just made more sense to transition to online um, and um, to leave the studio. And which was a really sad part of um, that time. Um, and to be honest, when I think about it now, I think opening a studio in Florence would be a great idea. I think we were a little bit too early with what we did. Um, but but still, I try to cultivate a community online. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm thinking more and more about ways to, to cultivate that community. Um, but it's, it's just interesting how life kind of like you think one thing and you think community is a specific, like something that's tangible, local, like in, like in front of you, um, not really digital. I, I do, I, I don't think of it as digital, but even when the pandemic hit, it was just so wonderful to have that online community and to have people to talk to. And um, it helped so much, especially, um, I know some people were depressed and um, talking to them online helped a lot. Um, helped me a lot too. 
So, and even yeah. when I had, a, I had a child um, during the pandemic, which is crazy. And during that time, like having those people around me were, it was just so helpful and so reassuring. So anyway, to say all that, I know that was like a, <laughs> a winding road, but um, community is interesting and community isn't just one thing. I think community can mean a lot of different aspects and a lot of different things. And um, it's just a fascinating like thought that community can be digital too. Absolutely. Um, but like I was saying about when we move into our new building, we've found the value of being able to share these weekly programs, which we could never do every week a program and physically have 25 people come into the place. It just people just don't have time, but you can turn yeah. on your, your zoom and do that. And we see a lot of the same people every week. Um, and also meet new people that we would never get to see people like your your friends from other places um but I also want to focus on you said a winding road it's been a winding road that's another theme I feel like often we talk about during these times because or these are lunch and learns when I'm asking people about their journey like when you first decided to be an artist what did you imagine it would be and then what is it really there's always a winding road that takes you to where you end up and you don't even ever really end up anywhere, right? It's just, yeah. you just keep moving forward. Um, and there's value in that. And it's actually really joyful once you kind of accept, okay, it maybe isn't what I thought it was gonna be, but this is a great period of time and then we'll see what happens next. So do you wanna talk a little bit about what you thought being an artist was gonna be like? And then like what, what it really is? <laughs> yeah, sure. Um... Oh my gosh, I guess when when I was in college, I had no concept of what an artist should be or what I wanted to be. I just wanted to create and I just wanted to have time to create. So I um, disregarded all my like gen ed courses, basically. Um, <laughs> it's really important too. <laughs> wasn't smart at all, um, but I just kind of like, like everything was about clay, everything was about ceramics, everything was about painting too. And so I was just in the studio all the time, day and night. Um, and the, I discovered painting before ceramics. So I was in my in the painting studio for um, till two or three in the morning and just, I guess just kind of like discovering what, what paint could do. And when I um, switched over to ceramics, um, that was, that was when I kind of felt like I, I found like my home, I guess I found like what, what I could, what spoke to me and I found ways to create and find my voice in ceramics. I found my voice earlier. Um, I, and I think that's one of the reasons why I kind of um, was like, I wanted to go to grad school, but um, the price of grad school kind of <laughs> turned me off. Um, so, uh, I was really, I really tried to focus on developing my voice while I was in undergrad. Um, and so that's, that was um, kind of what I wanted to do. I don't, I don't even think I had a, a plan really um, after graduation. I just kind of just wanted to work and I just wanted to develop my voice. Um, once I graduated, I realized I needed to make money <laughs> and um, pay students. Um, so, it's got a job at a coffee shop. And then that um, turned into, I um, got a job at uh, a library. I was a librarian, a children's librarian for a couple of years, which was wonderful, the best job. I was on the bookmobile and reading stories to kids. And that was really, it was funny too, because that kind of my art started to, um, I, I, I don't know, I felt like there was a bit of like my voice changed a little bit while I was um, teaching, or not teaching, but like um, while I was a librarian. I don't know why. I think it was because like, I wanted to simplify, like I just kind of wanted to, um, I saw how like children were just so easily happy. Like you could just read one book to go to a daycare and read books to children. And they're just like thrilled, like that someone's like paying attention to them. And, and I just saw that like joy and simplicity and 
I started thinking about my own work and um, and I guess I guess it kind of translated into creating pieces that um, I would take like pieces of clay and kind of subtract the clay from the piece with like um, carving tools and kind of refine pieces. And um, I had like words on, I was, well, I, I did a little bit of graphic design while I was at um, college too, because it touched every, basically every art um, surface itself for music, but, um, and I would carve like words into pottery and stuff. And I did that for a couple of years while I was a librarian, that's kind of funny. Um, and then after that, I kind of like focused more on um, crystals and and things and um, and that was dealing more with, um, well, I guess I'll get into it. So like, <laughs> I was get like, I don't it. know if I can say all this, but. Um, yes, please so, do. <laughs> so with the, um, the crystals came about when I was um, working with clay, I was adding globs of clay to the pieces. And I always did that in college, but once I graduated, I started um, thinking how clay kind of transforms itself. Um, and so taking pieces of clay and carving it and adding color to it, it was kind of like taking that pain and um, sometimes like um, me dealing with like racism and dealing with like different things, like especially um, we live in a very um, Southern rural area. And um, so um, sometimes like racism can feel just very heavy. Um, so taking those like globs of clay, refining the pieces, carving, turning something sad into something beautiful um, really kind of helped a lot. It helps a lot with um, heavy and difficult thoughts and feelings. Um, and decorating them and making them as beautiful and as bright as possible kind of helps me translate those awful feelings into something that's like beautiful and, and um, something that feels, feels good. Um, so that's kind of like how I got into the crystals and even with crystals, how they're in the earth and that pressure kind of turns um, minerals and elements into like something that's beautiful. Um, just those like that transition and those like that pain and everything is kind of like where I kind of, I don't know, where it kind of came from basically. I love that you can manifest that in such a wonderfully, you know, um, physical manifest manifestation. It's a metaphor, but it's like, it, it really is physically bringing beauty and joy to people through pain, you know, because of the pressure, you, like using the, your ability to like, um, like process that information is that pain that you go through and then you're turning it into joy not just for yourself but for the rest of the world I mean it's beautiful everybody who looks at your work smiles nobody nobody can look at these beautiful brightly colored gems and sort of think bad thoughts um so you never know I mean <laughs> well I don't think and with all the people who walked by in the last couple of days everybody's just like oh my gosh they're so beautiful <clears throat> and it's um but they're so but beauty whole in in any in many regards often holds kind of pain and, and hides um negativity or and it, it's our way of, I think it's humans kind of way of dealing with that with the difficulty of life we need to sort of put our energies towards making things that are beautiful which I just want to thank you again for for making beautiful things um oh. because it yeah it is that just in itself is a way to make the world a better place I also want to go back to your children's librarian days for a moment because um, I think af after also, you know, I, reading, I've always loved children's books. Um, I've actually had a collection of them since I was a kid. There's something really powerful about how children's books, the best kind, can distill a huge idea or something really important about the world just into like one sentence on a page. And when you're reading those stories over and over again, especially for you, if you were watching many different children kind of react to them, it really does remind you that the, we can, um, you know, the importance of just kind of getting down to these basic tenets of, of life and 
being kind to people, you know, being, um, finding things that, that give you joy, making things. Um, so I love to hear you say that, that you feel like that that had an effect. And do you think that that's part of directly related to this idea of turning your difficulty and pain into something so beautiful? Did that, was that related to the idea of the, the children's books? That was a long question. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I don't know, maybe because I didn't start doing um, like the, the gemstones and things like that until after I, um, after, well, it was kind of like, I think I was in transition of leaving the library. So maybe that was like a, a little transition there. Maybe that's when I started, I started thinking about that. And I don't know, as something just happens to us that's kind of sad when we um, grow up, uh, it's kind of like we, we kind of absorb all of this junk and this stuff and we absorb all this just sadness. <laughs> and then like we, we kind of, I don't know, part of me kind of thinks we have to kind of get rid of it in a way, like we kind of have to like, um, take up all those layers to find our true selves. I mean, we're taught so many things from parents and television and friends and, and we're like, in, I don't know, there was like a couple of years ago, I was reading a book and it said how we, um, your personality is, is an embodiment of like all sorts of different like experiences and um, different things that you've learned from different people. And you kind of start thinking, who am I? Like, who am I as a person, you know? Like, who am I once I strip myself bear of all of these different things like um what do I like like within like intuitively um and I think you kind of have to just go all the way back to when you were a child and think about like what did you like then um before I, I think it, it was a, um, a quote but it um like before the world got their hands on you um so so yeah I I think maybe Maybe there was a, a transition point where um, carving, especially that type of carving, because I did carving while I was in college years ago, but it, um, especially if you were to take some of my um, mugs, for yeah, example. Yeah, I was just gonna say you um, could show us. Yeah, the carvings that are right here, um, especially like carving up through here and kind of carving the, the I call them globs of clay, but. Um, the porcelain that was that was in college. Um, the gemstones kind of were after after I became a librarian. So um, so I guess it's just like more like a transformation. It'd be interesting to see like ten years from now, kind of where what I'm doing and how how the clay is different. Um, so yeah, yeah. So let's talk about the transition of the last year for that reason. So you're probably too close to it still to know how that's exactly affecting you, but um, you became oh, a mother last year. <laughs> <laughs> what did you say? I said, oh, I know how it's affecting me. <laughs> All right, let's do it. You became a mother last year and how, how is that affecting you? Um, you talked a little bit about that when we had a, a studio visit earlier yeah. in terms of, yeah, that perspective. Yeah, it's, it's um, so hard. It is hard. Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's terrifying. It's, it's a lot of things. And I don't, you don't really hear a lot of people talk about it. It's kind of like people just kind of put their head down and they just make it work. Um, and, and maybe that's why you don't hear a lot of people talking about motherhood and, and art, um, because too busy. you don't really have time to do it. <laughs> 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 you don't have time to think about it you don't have time to kind of like I mean like I literally the only time I'm on my phone is like when I'm in the bathroom pooping or <laughs> at night when I'm like he's asleep and I'm just like oh I have notifications let me just get them all because I hate notifications like <laughs> that's kind of like the only two times um so it's just like your whole life changes and you start realizing what's important, of course. Um, you start seeing that, oh, wow, I didn't realize I checked my Instagram and Facebook 50,000 times a day. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize like I just kind of um, 
just we we throw away so much time like I threw away so much time before I had him um and and I think even even now like before when he was younger I was I could easily integrate him in my studio practice just put him on my back and or just I put him in a wrap and just work and he just kind of laid there but now he's like he is so busy and so inquisitive and so he's a joy he really is a joy to be around he's he's just very busy very busy um so a lot of times I just try to I just want him to discover himself I don't want to stick him in front of a tv although coming up here to Philadelphia we had to put an ipad <laughs> on so he could watch you need to have your own time too sometimes it's it, yeah don't, yeah don't yourself up. I know but it's just I just do I do feel bad about it um but but um it has been it's been life changing really it's changed my practice it's changed the way I think about about creating um and I, I think it'll it'll be nice in like maybe like two or three years to see how I evolve because I'm already thinking of ways to evolve um and way new things to create just because of him um yeah like so. what are the new things you're thinking about because of um him? I want to create more sculptural sculptural work um I don't have time to create it just think but about I, it now it's it's all yeah. in there yeah, a lot of more sculptures, a lot, a lot of more, um, I don't know. I never really, uh, I was, I do have to say, uh, I was, I always kind of feel a certain way because I was, I'm not, I'm not the type of artist that kind of, um, I don't really like creating things that um, make a statement in a certain way or something bold. And I don't know if that's just the elusive part of myself. Um, so part of me kind of feels like there's something missing sometimes in my work. Um, there's something that I'm hiding. Um, and so I'm thinking of ways to create now where it's a bit more um, vulnerable and scary. Um, mm -hmm. But I think one day I will do it. <laughs> um, one day, one day, we'll yeah. see. Well, that yeah, you have to kind of um, be aware of that and sort of plan for it. I think is a perfectly reasonable place to be, especially yeah. during a transition. Um, you mentioned that you're thinking more about the abstract um, and kind of incorporating more of what you were exploring in your painting into your clay. I know so that you have their gemstone series and then the abstract series. I don't know if you, you could probably show people, um, people can yeah. see behind you, there's a gemstone phase and then the abstract phase. Is that kind of a little bit about the transition? Um, it is, it's a little bit. It's, um, it's uh, I've been doing um, these like abstract vases for a couple of years now. Um, and this is a, a little bit, a little taste of what, what it is, but I think more so showing, um, when I was in college, I did a lot of um, porcelain work um, that was like high fire porcelain um, and that was translucent. And this clay is translucent. It's, a, um, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, I think it's frost, frost clay from uh, Laguna. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not as translucent as cone tin porcelain. Um, so, I do miss that a lot. And I have a high fire kiln at home that needs to be hooked up. So I one day hope to like get back into that. Um, and that's kind of like, I guess starting from there, going back to translucent cone tin porcelain and um, starting to think about like, because the stains kind of um, disappear at that higher range temperature, um, thinking about like different ways to work with color and that that would just that's a whole different ball game <laughs> and that that's very exciting that would be very exciting um a lot to a lot of um experimenting uh, but but it's exciting to think about that that's that's in my future i'm very excited about that you're in research um, mode i love research i know mode. Yeah. yeah and while i was in college though we did a lot of um cone tin firings and that's where i discovered cone tin porcelain and so i do have a lot of um 
books and research and uh, notebooks that I wrote down a lot of recipes and different things. So I'm so excited to get back into that. Um, and even like incorporating my wood pieces into that type of um, like maybe creating porcelain pieces and adding wood to them or um, I don't know, it's just, it's exciting to think about. Yeah, there's um, an artist who was here in Philadelphia for many years. Um, he's since passed away, but Rudy Staffel, who um, worked with translucent porcelain and he was using um, like mineral washes and stuff to get color. So oh, cool. I'm, happy to, I'm happy to show you some of that. Yeah, and that would maybe be awesome. can be some be great. He taught at Tyler for many years, Tyler School of Art, which has a great ceramics program here. I also think, you know, it's interesting to hear that you're, you want, or you, you had an idea about grad school um, and the expense. Well, I, I think, you know, as you're getting further along in your career, you can always apply and they need to give you funding. See, that's the thing. You don't pay for grad school. You get somewhere where they're going to pay you yeah. to be there, which yeah. I, you're making such great work. I would, I think that's possible. But speaking of which, do you want to talk a little bit about where you are physically right now in the, um, the art community that you're part of? I'm, I'm so fascinated by this, um, this place, this residency that you're a part of right now. Yeah, so like um, I live in Lake City, South Carolina, and there's um, an organization called the Lake City Greater Alliance, and they're, they're basically, um, they started something called Art Fields, and I think the 10th anniversary is next year, which is really cool. Um, so they're going to, um, well, they always have this, um, this festival every year is in the spring. Um, it's a $50,000 cash prize for um, an artist. Um, and there's other prizes too, uh, I think 25,000, uh, 12,500. And it's for the Southeast uh, of the United States. Um, and people enter and it's such a fun place to be for a week and a half. There's like artists from all over the Southeast, even sometimes even further um, than that. and everyone just kind of walks around and looks at the art. The art is installed in different um, businesses, uh, downtown Main Street and um, a little bit, I think it's spreading out a little bit. It's spread out a little bit more to like different shops and stuff and people can vote for uh, the main prize. They can uh, vote for 2D and 3D. I think that's what it is. And the grand prize winner is, is, um, is picked by jurors, so, but it's such a cool event. Um, and they're wanting to start an artist in residence program, which is really fun. Um, we're kind of like a pilot program, but not really kind of, not really. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we're, we're living there. We've been living there for three years. It's a wonderful place to be. I'm so happy to be there. When I first moved there, it was very hard because at that time um, I gave up the studio, left the studio and I felt like I lost home. And so for a long time, I was just kind of like, where is home, 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 home. And looking back now, I'm just like, God, Tiffany, get off of that and just <laughs> focus on something else. Um, but obviously I needed to feel that I needed to go through it. Um, I feel like I'm a better person because of it. Um, but, but anyway, Lake City really is a great place. Um, I hope you guys can come, all of you, come one day. You would I like want to visit. Yeah. Uh, you know, I was just talking to some the colleague of mine who's I think on the call yesterday about home and place and family and the idea that they're you know once you find your family and if it's your your partner your kids certainly having a child I think it cements this idea but like that's where your home is it's where yeah. you're, it's where your oh my gosh I almost said it's where your heart is I'm sorry it's like really true though <laughs> <laughs> once you have a child and you're like well it doesn't matter where I am right as long as we're together um, yeah. but but moving is hard because place is important um especially if there's other family members there and you should certainly not beat yourself up and say get over it it's just like that's part of maybe this idea of digging into the scary parts right and what you're thinking about in your work and exposing the, the parts that are difficult kind yeah. of in a more obvious way um because it's it's beautiful to turn the pain into these beautiful gems, but maybe maybe people need to see the see the pain 
too. Um, I'm going to go back again to something you said about, I think during our studio visit a couple months ago about when you had your son and, and what you wanted him to see from your work. Um, I'm going to try to remember, I wrote it down at the time, but it was kind of like how you could how you could present the world to him in a way that he would find joy and he would find, um, you know, strength to kind of bear the difficulties that he might face. Yeah. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, um, I, uh, I think because there are like so many issues with like, um, oh gosh, there's so many things, religion, race, um, um, there's so many so many socioeconomic things <laughs> um just a lot of things that um that we're like constantly slammed with every day and it's just so easy for us to slip into a sadness um and just every day just see and experience that pain and that sadness and I mean I know I know he he's his own body he's his own self and I just want him to to realize that he has that power to just not let it become himself, like not let it overcome. Um, and I know, I know that I, I have no, <laughs> like I know that I have no, I, I can't protect him from it. Like I, I can't do anything to kind of like shield him from it. But I guess the only thing I can do is equip him with the necessary coping. Yeah things to like help him cope with those issues um but I just I guess when when he looks at my work I want him to to see that there is beauty in the world and just try to find the good um just try to look for it even through the hard parts um I think just having that hope sometimes it's like I know sometimes we all been there where is so sad you're like there is no hope in this situation at all um but you have to find it like you just have to you just have to find it you have to keep moving um and I just want him to realize that and and I think that's what I want people to see in my work to know that there is hope like you can you can get there you can you can grasp for it in any situation just try to find it um I think that's what I want him to, to realize. Yeah. Well, and your love and trying to equip him with those things is a way to protect him. So I think, I think that's what we, that's what we can do. You're doing it. Um, and as you're talking, I see that someone wrote very proud of you, Tiffany, and the picture of that person either says home or hope in the background. Oh, so hey. is that someone you know back there with the words yeah. you were just saying, hope and home? <laughs> yeah, I think that's hey. <laughs> I just I just looked up right when you said home. I looked up and I was like, that word it says home in the background. Oh yeah, see it's who Ms. you are. Shirley. Hey Miss Shirley, how are Ms. you? Shirley, Tiffany. Hey, how are yeah, you? Yeah, my mom. We're so proud of you. All oh, right. thank you. It's thank wonderful seeing you coming into play okay <laughs> thanks for joining us um does anyone if anyone wants to make a comment we have a couple of comments and or if anyone wants to ask a question specifically um feel free to take yourself off mute i'll just say that raymond says he loves the idea of combining wood parts and porcelain emily who i don't know says i miss you guys i'm so glad to hear you discussing your work and John, it's John Whitman, right? Wood elements would be great. I love the textures of mixtures of texture and different earthy medias. And I love the picture of um, him in the giant ceramic cup that you made. Is there a picture of your son in the big cup? Is that one? Yes, there is. There is. Okay. Yeah. I need to post it. I I kind of kept it to myself, and then like I use um, Facebook as a more like a family close friends type of deal. And so I posted it there and um, yeah, he's so cute in that cup. Yeah. <laughs> he was. <laughs> I have a picture of Harry in a bowl when he was a baby, like a wooden bowl. So Aww. I get that. Um, I do think that we don't, 
we don't certainly in the art world and I guess in society in general don't talk about the idea of motherhood or parenthood and art as much as I feel like we should I feel like it's such a it, I mean it is it's a transformational experience and there's something probably because it's um about women too that we just are like not allowed to talk about it or that we feel like we have to apologize when we're talking about it or it has to be something that is um you know it's deemed to be not serious enough or something which is crazy to me because what is more serious than having having and you know raising a child and that's not to belittle those who don't because everyone you know you find a way to nurture people in your life so it can be in a different way can be mentorship but I just I love that you talk about the fact that you have your son I love there were pictures of him on your back while you were throwing in the studio and it's just that it's that representation right showing people that it's okay and that you can be a mother and and an artist at the same time is it's something that we're still working on so also mm -hmm. kudos to you for doing that paving the way for for others it's important um I want to thank you and I want to um just one more time see if anyone else does anyone want to take yourself off mute and ask a question or make some comments before we say goodbye question this is Harry. So Tiffany, how do we, uh, uh, how do you within your practice introduce children to sculpture, pottery, ceramics? How, how do you, how do you do that? Well, I don't, I think it depends on the age really, because like when, when even when we had a studio years ago, and children would just be like, like just sticker their faces to the window. I had my pottery wheel like at the front of the studio sometimes and I would throw and they just be sticking their faces in the window just looking like this, like, oh my gosh, what did she do? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, that was, that's what I really, really miss. Um, but I think there's just such a, because clay is just so tactile. So like, Mm -hmm. such a so beautiful and just the it's just, the way you just feel it you can just like mm -hmm. I don't know it's just such a fun medium um you just easily just let just give a child a piece of clay and just see what they do with it and see how they how they um fill it with their fingers and what they make with it and the things that they do I mean it's just um if even if you just I don't know like I guess thinking more in the school setting um you could start with air dry clay because I know like um, buying a kiln and purchasing kilns and purchasing, you know, you know how it is being mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in a school setting. Um, but air dry clay would be a, a great way to start. Um, you can even start with towels, um, making towels or um, making little figures. Um, I don't know, there's just all sorts of different ways to just start. I think one of the main things is just starting, just giving a child a piece of clay and just letting them go at it without having any rules or restrictions. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, I, I just keep thinking, like, if I were to give a piece of clay to my one-year-old, I would say, don't eat it. Don't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> other than that, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you can just do it. so much with, with clay. Sure. Um, sure. I say just let them play with it and see what, see how far it goes. Thank you. Harry, have you taught kids? Is that what that question came from? Or? I am an educator. Yes, I'm an educator, um, science, but also do art. And so, yeah, when the children visit, I just let them explore. They're like, okay, Harry, can we paint? It, it could be 11 o'clock at night. I said, sure, I can't deny them. And I just let them go for it. Yeah, no rules, just create. Yeah, yeah and embrace that. What a great connection between science and art there is too, especially oh, yeah. play to talk yes. about. Yeah, that's great. It sounds, um, so we at the Clay Studio, for those who don't know, have a clay mobile program. It's been around since the early 90s. And that was a way that we've sort of gotten around this idea that, you know, the schools can't have their own kilns. And honestly, a big part of the expense was getting the kids to come here 
transportation. So we bring teachers and everything you need to have a clay class out to close to 4,000 students every year. Well, non-pandemic times. Um, although our teachers also have done an amazing job pivoting to, to teaching the, even those Claymobile classes online, which is amazing. Um, so yeah, I think Tiffany, you have a lot of uh, similar values. Um, I feel like if you ever move to Philadelphia, we want you to be <laughs> definitely gonna bring you into the fold. Um, <laughs> I would just want everyone to move to Philadelphia. I think it'd be great. Uh, and I love your idea of like the kids at the window. So in the new building, can't stop saying new building, sorry. We're gonna have um, um, a studio like right in that front window so that anytime somebody okay. walks by, they'll see someone either making like a, a visitor who's doing a making activity or an artist throwing or, or making something to really make sure people understand. Um, and we're just sort of putting right out onto the, onto the sidewalk. Cause it sometimes is just getting someone who walks by and had no idea what was there, right? Which probably happened in your studio. Like, oh my gosh, someone's making art and just walk in and be surprised and, and have that be come an important part of their lives. Just like you walk by the clay studio in your college. It's like, they're playing with mud. I'm gonna play with yeah, mud. Yeah, I think, like, I honestly think all it, all it needs to be like, even, I know it's not like, I know we'll never have like this huge kumbaya thing with <laughs> the way the world is now, but, um, I just think there just needs to be, just needs to be like this openness, like, um, and a lot of people feel like they're not welcome. Like, for example, when we did have the studio, people would just be like, can I come in? And I'm like, of course you can come in. Or um, I heard a lot of parents tell their children, because we, we were right beside a awesome barber shop. It was the coolest thing ever. But um, we were right beside a barbershop and I heard parents, like the children just be looking like, oh my gosh, what, what are they doing? And the parents would say, no, that's not for you. And hearing that really, I think it's one of the worst things you can hear because it makes them realize that art isn't for them or that type of like experience isn't for them. And I think just having that openness and just like even community programs really change people's lives and it really helps people realize that art is for them like it's accessible to them um and a lot of people are nervous because they feel like it's not for them and that that barrier just needs to be taken down um, and i think even um where we are um, living in late city i see that barrier too and maybe it's just all over the world maybe it's just something that a lot of people feel um, that art isn't for them because they feel like it's either too stuffy or they feel like um, they don't know how to make something pretty or um, they want it to be perfect or they want it to look a certain way. When art, I mean, there's art therapy. There's like, you can create art just to make yourself feel better. It doesn't have to be a certain way. Um, yeah. Yeah, that idea of, organizations like ours and like when you had your studio being aware that there's a barrier that people just yeah being aware don't of think that it's for them it's the first thing that needs to happen so that we can work to break down that barrier which I'm not trying to turn this into a commercial for the clay studio but <laughs> something we've been working on for a while because we know that we know that that exists and we want to make sure that we're doing everything we can to we say ask to be welcomed into our new neighborhood it's like we don't, we want people to feel welcome walking in the door, but we realize that actually what's important is that they welcome us so that they feel agency and ownership and, and know they can walk in the door anytime and um, <clears throat> that it is their place because they sort of let us come, right? It's that, um, <laughs> put the power on, on that side. And um, yeah, it's amazing how many people just doesn't even matter what kind of background they come from. They're like, oh, I can't do art. I'm not good at it. Yeah. But that's a huge, huge barrier to break down. Um, all right, a couple more comments. Looks like somebody who you taught her 10th birthday party and it rocked. Yeah, Tiffany, Tiffany Wittebaker. <laughs> um, and otherwise those kids would never have gotten that experience, kudos. And um, Andre's asking if ever you've seen Laudenton Dupere's work. I'm probably saying that wrong. Andre, do you want to 
take yourself off mute and tell us who oh you put her you put an instagram go ahead yeah i put her instagram on it's london du, uh, dupree uh london. just some similarities with regards to textures and surfaces i thought you might uh might enjoy those oh cool thank you yeah I'll look. um yep raymond's saying we're gonna have that front window and the oh, no. yeah <laughs> And then Tiffany's piece rests proudly on the nightstand of that little girl. Is her name Tiffany too? Is that? Well, um, her mother's name is Tiffany. Oh, I think it's um, Janaya. Is that's what a J? Her daughter's name. Oh, but Joya. Yeah. Joya. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Okay. Well, thanks everyone. I'm so energized by this conversation, and um, I feel so proud that. I'm honored that we got to have you as a guest and that you're going to have a show in the in the gallery. So anyone who's around Philadelphia, please come tomorrow. The show's going to open at five o'clock for First Friday. We're going to have free tile making in our parking lot. So um, it's tile making is for everyone. And if you aren't in the neighborhood, you can check out her work on our website um, tomorrow. So thanks everyone for joining us today. And thank you so much, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you for having me. This is such a wonderful place and great experience. And I'm so glad to be here. Thank you. That means a lot. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Have a great day. Bye, guys.